What's up everybody, I'm Mr. Calhoun. This is Digital Photography 2 and classes in session. Today we're gonna to jump into editing our photos in Lightroom. So let's begin. I've got these photos that I have marked as five stars. I'm gonna go ahead and edit three of them in here. Uh, I think for the first one I'll talk and then after that the next two I'll be quiet and we'll just let the music play and you can watch. So I'll start here with the Grand Tetons. And if yours looks like this, you need to tap this set of three sliders here to bring out the editing menu. You can click auto, and sometimes that's a pretty good place to start. It doesn't have a whole lot of effect on my photo. If I wanna undo, I click this arrow. There are presets. And if you wanted, you could select one of those as a starting point. I'm gonna undo that. But in here under light is where we start to really be able to make changes. So first is this exposure slider. I can change the exposure of it. And if I can't get it quite back where I wanted it, I could double tap and it goes to zero. If I hold the slider and then hold my finger on the photo, it'll show me clipping. And it's telling me that those areas are too bright and that there will be no detail if I were to print the photo especially, there'd be no detail there. Contrast is going to make the bright areas brighter and the dark areas darker, or it'll flatten it all out and make everything even more gray. Highlights, it's gonna make those bright areas brighter or those really bright areas darker. Same thing, if I hold the slider, hold the screen, it will show me clipping. Get just a little bit there at the far end. Same for shadows. Move the slider, tap the screen. But this image, it, it's sort of very neutral to begin with. And then this button here, next to light, is for contrast. And a typical industry standard is to make what's called an S-curve, where you would grab this and a little bit up. This controls the brighter areas. And over here, you would move that down a little bit. And that controls the darker areas and create what's called an S-curve. I go into color, I can control the temperature. Moving into orange will make it feel warmer. Moving it into blue will make it feel colder. I can tint it towards magenta or towards green. Vibrance is going to be how colorful those colors are. Saturation is going to be how much of that color there is. I definitely recommend going in there and sliding every slider to its max to see what it does. But ultimately, it's all about very subtle changes. Texture is a relatively new slider. Uh, it's kind of like clarity. If I push clarity up, I get a lot more definition, uh, but it also sucks a lot of the color out of the image. If I go to the left, it makes it um, some sort of dream effect almost. Texture does a similar thing. It adds a lot of definition without sucking away the color too much. And to the left, I get this sort of dream effect. Um, similar to clarity. The next one there, dehaze, is something I typically say to stay away from. However, with mountain shots, you will often find that you get haze, especially in the foothills area at the bottoms of the mountains. When I was in this area, there happened to be a lot of wildfires, so there's this really thick haze going through there, and this is a time when dehaze actually does a really good job. So if I slide that to the right, I start to get more definition, more clarity. It's also increasing the saturation because it's adding contrast. And so you wanna be careful because it's also gonna add digital noise. I can up the clarity and that's gonna help bring some of that saturation down and still give more definition to those mountains. 
and maybe just a little bit of texture. I'll go ahead and move down. Vignette is going to either add this white uh, frame around it, if I go to the right, or darker. And it can help you emphasize, you know, something in your photo if you're wanting to. I usually don't use a vignette, so I'll just set all these back to zero. Grain is going to add uh, something that is supposed to approximate, you know, film grain, but really it just sort of creates this digital noise. Detail is going to allow you to sharpen the photo. And you can see that the slider turns red towards the end. Red usually is danger, right? So you want to be very careful with this slider. Uh, if you go too far, it's usually not good for your image. For whatever reason, I have a habit of, let's say if I decide I want to set my sharpening at 60, then I'm going to set my detail to 30. I just have this habit of setting the detail to be half of the sharpening. So if I were to set it at 90, I would take my detail to 45. There's no rhyme or reason, it's just something that I do. I'm gonna go back up to light. If you want to make the image black and white here under color, we have a black and white button. You can tap that again to turn it off. Next to it, you'll see a color wheel. If we go into that, we can control the mix of our colors here under color mix. So if I want to change my blues to a different hue, meaning what color the color is, this is where I would do that. And maybe I want my blues to be a little more teal, but that's too much, so I can desaturate it a little. I can control it, uh, the darkness or brightness, the luminance of that color, how bright or dark it is. Maybe I want my yellows to be more orange, and my reds to be more orange. Double click them to set them back to where they were. You can see that that will also default them. I'm going to go lower the saturation. Let me go under effects. Oh, detail. Let's talk about noise reduction. You can see I've got quite a bit of noise in this photo. And I can use this noise reduction slider. And that's going to remove a lot of it, but at a cost. You can see it starts to look like uh, the photo is not in focus. And even if I lift the detail, it doesn't help too much, a little bit. So you gotta be really careful about how much noise reduction you use. And I think I'm happy with that right there. So from this point forward, I'm just going to go through editing images and we'll listen to the music. No, I'm not. I lied. Well, 
below those three sliders, we have presets. Uh, it's very similar to the profile that was in the other slider. It would open. <laughs> there we go. Much like profile here, we have presets. And below that, we have the ability to crop and flip and rotate and straighten our image. So if yours was a little bit crooked, you could come in here and make sure that it was straight. You can click that button there and it's going to straighten it automatically. And I can undo it. So I'll go ahead and do the auto straighten. I can change my aspect ratio here. Or just go back to original. Once you're happy with it, you'll click done. These options here are paid options. Um, so we won't be doing any clone stamping or healing. Once you're finished, you'll click this square with an arrow. And we're going to go ahead and export this to the camera roll. I'll go ahead and start on my next photo. And here we go. Apply these same tools to go ahead and edit your photos, submit them to whichever photo edit assignment you're working on, and you'll be good to go. So that's it. I hope you're staying safe out there. Wash your hands, and I'll see you in the next one.